going to be fun here. It's going to be fun. All right. And we are now officially live. All right. We're going to go live here. I'll just wait for a few people to gather board. Come on board. Give you guys some time. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun here. It's going to be fun. All right. And we are now officially live. Henry Alexander in the house. Mike in the house. Akash in the house. Thank you guys for joining me. Appreciate you guys. Just wait for a few people to gather board. Come on board. Give you guys some time. Charlie, good morning. It's going to be fun. Psy T. Psy is a she. I know that now for a fact. Am I right, Psy? Henry Alexander in the house. Just give me two more minutes and we're going to start. Two more minutes. Going to start. Morning, Jason, Veronica, Arvin Garcia from the Philippines. Love it, man. I think next time I'm going to have like a big map or something, and I can just put in where everybody's from, man. So uh, put your cup. We got India in the house. We got the Philippines in the house. Who else do we have? Who else do we have? I really enjoy this part, by the way. You know, just everybody coming in globally, man. It's just a small world, right? It really is. If you think about it, it's really good. Levi B says, you're the greatest. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right. All right. I'm going to get started. If you don't mind, let's just jump into it. Um, so I, I, this is a model I came up with uh, a few years back. Uh, by the way, so there's a book. I mentioned this book. Uh, this is my sales model book, right? Uh, and I, what I'm going to start doing is really taking a lot of the models I have here, and I have some new models that I'm actually adding into the book, so I'll have to update the book. Uh, so that's available on Amazon. Cool? And I'm not trying to sell you. It's just that this, I think, is one of the best books I've ever written because, you know, my brain thinks in models. Do you know what I mean? I can't remember a lot of stuff. You know, I got, I got ADHD bad, and so I can't remember a lot of stuff. So I use models to actually sell. And so that's why I highly recommend that book because there's some cool sales models in there. So I want to talk to you about one model that I use a lot. And this one plays into product positioning, right? It's how do you position the product in your client's brain, in their mind, right? And so what I want to do is let's set up a scenario. So this will make sense. Let's set up a scenario, right? Let's say that, you know, you're trying to sell a computer. Again, something simple, transactional sale. If you're high level things, SaaS system, right? Software as a service. But let's say you're trying to sell a computer. And now you know that when you talk to the customer, we always go through the discovery phase, right? Which is you ask a lot of questions to figure out what's important to the customer, right? So what's important to the customer? Well, they tell you, you know what? I don't want a desktop. I want a laptop. Uh, it's got to have good processing speed. Got that. Also, memory is important, hard drive, a lot of capacity, and then, you know, a large screen size. So this is the priorities that they've given you. Now, I'm going to give you four strategies for positioning your product. Let's say you have a competitive product and you're trying to sell against this, right? So what we want to do is maybe sometimes adjust the customer's framework, shift their priorities, and there's four strategies that you can use to position or shift a buyer's priorities. Let's go through them. Like for example, the first one is sometimes you want to minimize, hold on a second here. One, sometimes you want to minimize, I'll say minimize, minimize, right? A priority. What do I mean by minimize? You want to let the customer know, the customer says, I want that. And you say, you know, that, that is important, but it's not as important as other things. 
So for example, in this case, let's say these are the priorities. They want a laptop, they want speed, they want memory, they want the screen size, right? But you say, after talking to the customer, you say, for example, look, based on your workflow, you're only gonna use like, you know, uh, like Microsoft Word, or and sometimes you're gonna use PowerPoint, but you're really just gonna use your Word document and your Excel document, which means you're not gonna lead, need a lot of processing speed. So I would say that speed is less of a priority. And because you're using your computer a lot, so you're minimizing speed, what I, want, what I consider more important for you is you're spending a lot of time in front of the computer. I then want to go to the second strategy is elevate. And then what I want to do is say, what's more important is I would consider screen size to be the most important, right? So one, I minimized how much speed they'll really need, shifting their priorities, right? But then I elevate it because maybe they're, they're not thinking about it. I said, what you really need that's really higher priority should be a screen size. One, you're spending a lot of time in front of the computer. Two, let's say you're talking to somebody who's a baby boomer, right? They're older than 55, which means their eyes might be gone. So not only are they working in front of a computer for a long time, they're going to what? They're going to have to see better, have a bigger screen. So what I can do is, what I just did is I elevated the screen in terms of importance, and I minimize the speed for that particular customer. Okay, so that's two different strategies you can use. You can minimize something. What you're saying to the customer is like, I know you say that's important, but if you really put it in context, that's not as important as elevate something else. It kind of works like that. It's a real good way of shifting the actual priorities. Now, two more strategies. Sometimes you have to highlight something. So the third one is highlight something. Highlight something could be when you really just put an emphasis on a specific characteristic, a feature that you offer, your competitor doesn't offer, you want to highlight that. So for example, let's go back here. Let's say that one of the things you want to highlight, in this case, you want to highlight, not only do we have great memories, I said one of the things we do is with this memory, you want to, again, and I'll just say highlight because there's no other way to highlight. You want to put squares around this thing that says you really want a lot of memory because your job requires that. And when you look at our cost, our memory, guess what? We offer the best price per memory. And what you're simply doing is highlighting that one for them. That's all you're doing. So another way of writing this out, let me see if I can write it this way. So what you want to do in this case is, if I can use the highlighter here, I would say what I want to do is highlight this specific feature. And that's the one you really want to talk about. Now, as you're highlighting that feature, you're kind of indirectly elevating it. But sometimes you need to let the customer know, hey, not only do we have this, we're really good at it. That's a way of highlighting something. Now, let's go over to the last part. So minimize, reduce the priority. Elevate, raise the priority. Highlight, you want to emphasize something you have that maybe your competitor doesn't have, so you want to highlight that. Then the fourth one is, this is an interesting one, you want to insert. Now, insert means you want to insert something into the conversation that the customer hasn't thought about. This is important. Sometimes the customer's priority is just focused on what? One, two, three, four. They're saying, all I care about is laptop screen size, memory, and speed. So let's say that you're talking. Here's an example. You're talking to a customer. You're asking them questions. And one of the things you know that you're good at, that your product is good at, is weight, right? Your laptops are so light that nobody else in the market can compare, but the customer's not thinking about that. So what you would do is you ask the customer, Mr. Customer, how often do you travel? And the customer might say, well, you know what? I travel at least three times a week. I said, which means you have to carry a lot. You got your luggage to carry and you're, you're lugging around that computer a lot. So maybe one of the things you should consider, Mr. Customer, is the weight of the actual item, right? And what you're saying is now what I'm doing is I'm inserting this as a priority in their priority stack. So now it's a new consideration. Now it's laptop screen, memory, weight, and speed. And yes, you could argue that maybe you can elevate weight to a higher priority and move it, you know, not move that, move this up here. So in other words, you can say, you know, weight is really important. It should be almost at the top, somewhere between screen size and your laptop. So keep this in mind. There's four strategies you can use to elevate, lower, highlight, 
and then insert something the customer hasn't thought about. And again, I just wanted to share with you this model. I think it's a fascinating strategy when you look at your product or your service. So how would you use it? Think about this for a second. Think of your ideal client, right? Think of your ideal client profile. And if I were to ask you, when you're talking to a client, what are their three to five priorities? You'll probably be able to list maybe five priorities, things that they care about. And my question to you is, as you're looking at the customer's priorities, what you want to do is shift these around, elevate, minimize, insert, or highlight. Use those four strategies to move these around so when the customer looks at it, it goes, that's the product I want. So what you're doing is you're readjusting, almost moving the furniture around in the customer's head. Basically, you're shifting priorities so they line up with your product strength. Let me say that again. You're shifting the priorities by using these four strategies. By using these four strategies, you're shifting the client's priorities so they match your product strength. And so the customer says, okay, that, cu that product fits our product. It's exactly what we're looking for. Now think about this one B2B example. If you're selling a SaaS product, right? Software as a service, maybe your customer has certain priorities that really don't line up with your product strength. But as you're presenting and you start shifting their priorities using one of these or all four strategies, by the end of the presentation, your goal is to have those four lined up. And that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. Now, you guys got any question related to this? No, give me questions that are related to this. Don't go outside the box. And let's see what type of comments we're getting. We got Mumbai, Canada, Ethiopia in the house. India's back. Oh, India's always in the house. But if we minimize what customers want, then he'll feel neglected, isn't it? Remember, I said minimize. And this is Henry. Great question, Henry. Remember, I said minimize. It's still within the priority. I didn't say, you know, discard. Big difference. Minimize means I'm shifting the priorities. I'm helping the customer understand what's really important. Remember, in selling, our job is to help the customer understand what they really need. Because sometimes we know our product better. We know how it could help them. And maybe they're not seeing it correctly. So I'm not saying don't listen to the customer or neglect what they're saying. I am saying... Minimize means, let me shift the priorities. It's still important. It's still in the top five. It's still important, but what really matters are these three up here, so forth and so on. Great question though. Customers want a lot, but it's up to us to give them what they need. Customers sometimes know what they want, but sometimes they don't know what they need. Do you know what I mean? So that's a great statement. Sometimes they, they know what they want, but they don't know what they need. We've all been in the situation where we go into a situation to buy something, right? And we think we know what we want. But when you come across a great salesperson and they say something like this, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Customer goes, no, I haven't. And then you start, the salesperson starts explaining why that's important. And the, and the customer goes, oh, I didn't know that. See, that's real selling because now the salesperson is not just reacting to what they want. The salesperson is understanding what they want, but more importantly, understanding what they need and how they can help their customer be that much more successful with their purchase. So it's always about keeping the customer in mind. I always want to emphasize, these tactics are not about manipulation. Do you know what I mean? They're not about manipulating the customer. It's helping them organize their thoughts. I don't like manipulation. I don't like trying to fool a customer. I am saying that if I have a product and the customer is looking at it wrong, their priorities are not lined up with mine, my job as a salesperson is to help them understand and get aligned with how we can help them. What else we got? Uh, how different is this from a blue ocean strategy? So Saj, a blue ocean strategy is very similar model, right? But blue ocean strategy, great question, by the way. So I love that. So a blue ocean strategy would be this. When you're looking at a blue ocean strategy, by the way, for those who don't know what a blue ocean strategy is, is that there's red oceans and blue ocean. Red ocean, a lot of competition. Blue ocean, not a lot of competition. You want to play there. In a blue ocean strategy, you have this. And if I remember correctly, a blue ocean strategy says, uh, what do you want to start doing? What should you start doing in a certain market? What should you stop doing or eliminate, right? 
what should you do? What should you start, stop? And I think it was, what should you do more of? And what should you do less of? And then with each of these quadrants, you would come up with strategies to be more efficient in how you approach your market. So this is the market approach. This is a blue ocean market approach. Great question though. I got a smart audience. Dang it, I gotta be careful with you guys. Uh, the example is more if you're face-to-face, -face, but if you're communicating with the customer is with email and very limited, what is the right approach? Well, of course that's gonna be difficult via email, but, 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 Mike K, got a solution for you. Uh, did you see, Mike, I did a webinar called the, the No Touch Selling webinar. Mike, did you see that webinar, No Touch Selling? Give me a yes or no, Mike. Give me a yes or no, Mike. On that one, hold on a sec, let me just click. Well, you know what, I'll do another canvas here. So the question you have is, I wanna make sure I got it again, my face-to-face -face approach. So there is a program, let's say you have to send the customer a proposal, Mike, right? I'm gonna give you an answer, I'm gonna give you a solution, Mike. So let's say you have to send a proposal, right? And so what I'd like you to think about, here's a proposal that you're gonna send out, right? P for proposal. And then you're gonna email it, right? That's what most of us typically do. Customer doesn't wanna meet with us or we can't meet because of the current situation. What I suggest is there is a program called Loom. If you go to loom.com and what Loom does, and I talked about this in my No Touch Selling webinar, by the way. By the way, some of you have asked me about my webinars. Once I do a webinar, like a full webinar, they're usually in my Sales Velocity Academy. So if you haven't become a member of my Sales Velocity Academy, you should. So go to salesvelocityacademy.com. Mike, back to your question. So Loom allows you to click on the video screen, click on your icon. Once you download the app, you click the button, it starts recording your video on your webcam. And then what you have on your screen is the actual proposal. And so now you can explain the actual proposal and then it automatically attaches your head, your video right there. And then when you send the email, it'll come attached with the video. And that's probably an opportunity for you to explain it. I'm not saying that's solving all your problems, but at least it allows you visually to explain your situation. Hope that helps, Mike. Uh, give the people what they need. The legit model of every question. Right. Don't give them what they want. You give them what they need. Size in the game. So this coincides with your model or... It increased revenue, expand market share, reduce cost. Jason, you guys are awesome, man. You guys are a smart group. You guys have been following me, haven't you? So uh, Jason's talking about my model. If you know the, the value trinity, right? If you haven't been, if you're not familiar with my value trinity, and by the way, Jason, this is obviously another model I use, right? So the model he's referring to is, there's three ways you can help a B2B company. Increase revenue, reduce costs, or expand market share, right? So the way I would tie these two together is this is the actual intent. This is what you're trying to help them do. Increase revenue, reduce costs, or expand market share. That's what you're trying to do with your product or service, assuming it's a B2B scenario, right? So this is kind of what you're trying to do. What I'm talking about when I talked about the quadrant with the four, right? The, the elevate, minimize, insert, highlight. This is about positioning the product. Obviously, this is the outcome of a great product positioning. So good question. Let me see. Thank you, Saj. I appreciate that. And thank you. Perfect. So does that make sense? I just wanted to highlight that. And so, uh, again, if you like these Facebook Lives, give me a high five. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, tell me if you want to hear, see more of them. Uh, if you're wondering why I don't schedule them, it's because, you know, I got to be honest. Again, the way my brain works, when I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. When I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it. And I've learned not to, you know, push myself into doing something like this. So uh, I'll try to do at least one or two YouTube lives with a specific model. And But give me some feedback. Tell me if you like this format, me talking to you guys, uh, or you like the Sales Influence podcast, the audio version. I want to hear from you, man. I'm here to serve you. I love sales. And if you're watching this channel, I have to assume you love sales too. Why? Because you serve the customer and in exchange, you can make a lot of money. On that note, I'm out of here. And just remember, selling ain't hard when you know how, right? Take care, guys. We'll see you.